what's up guys it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another new world video guys listen only seven days remain well seven and a half days till launch I'm so so excited uh, and with that guys we're gonna be talking about professions today I know a lot of you guys probably have questions about whether you should use professions what professions you should use which ones are better than other ones early mid and late game and we're gonna talk about that here today now in order to keep this simple and condensed we're only going to be talking about the crafting professions, not necessarily the gathering or the refining because those are all pretty self-explanatory. Pick up wood, turn it into lumber, craft a doll. Easy clap, all right? <laughs> so we're just gonna be going from left to right. And before we get into this, guys, there's one thing I need you to really understand. A lot of the recipes, your best recipes for crafting, you will find in the world, not just by leveling your stuff up. Okay, so if you're looking at your crafting list and you see things like, I can't find a legendary chest, I don't know why. It's because you can find stuff like that out in the world. So unfortunately, being a crafter is not just about leveling up your crafting and crafting the best stuff that's just already populated in the list. It's about getting out there, exploring a tournament, and finding the best stuff to craft so you can separate yourself from your competition. First things first, we're going to be talking about weapon smithing and armor smithing. We're going to couple this together, still under the pretense that the best recipes are yet to be found, just because you find them in the world. A lot of people are wondering if crafting is even worth doing since a lot of the crafting and best recipes are gated and a lot of people just opt to get faction gear but the the true answer the real answer and this is something that i tested because in each testing phase that i've been in i wanted to make sure that i did something different so in one testing phase my focus was pvp and just leveling as fast as i could and other testing phases my focus was crafting and seeing what the difference was and what life looked like on the crafting side of things and with that i discovered that the beauty of being a crafter and or doing pve is it gives you access to crafting mods which you can then craft specific sets of gear and weapons which can in turn be very very profitable throughout the entire game not only monetarily but also in terms of experience right so to give you guys an example there is a hammer mod and you guys have probably heard me reference this a bunch of times but there's a hammer mod that you can get when you craft hammers that gives you more life regen when you use certain abilities so it'll say you know 18 percent or 20 percent of damage that you deal is recovered as health and you can stack that basically on top of the passive that already exists in the hammer tree which in turn makes your leveling more efficient lessens the need for potions, food, etc. So then you can stay out there for longer periods of time and it opens up more efficient farming like AOE and things of that nature because you're less susceptible to dying, <laughs> right? But if you're not paying attention to crafting mods and perks, which are really, really important, it's like these little items that you guys will find that basically give extra abilities to weapons. And unfortunately, if you guys are just grabbing items or just looking for drops, in dungeon and or other PvE situations, it's completely random, so you don't know what you're going to get. But with the use of perks and these special bonuses that you can get on your equipment, you can choose how you want your gear to look like. This is what makes crafting, especially early mid game, very, very valuable, especially if you know what you're doing. The extra gear score, the extra damage, the specialized weapons and armor can make for a lot smoother experience as you guys are advancing through the world. So is faction gear good? Sure. But can you craft better gear? Absolutely. So those are the things that you guys are going to be looking at for my weaponsmiths and armorsmiths as you guys get into the game if you're thinking about getting into those two professions. So now let's talk armoring. We talked a little bit about the perks and stuff that you guys can find. The perks thing is still going to apply even when you're crafting armor. Now armoring gets a little bit weird, but Definitely a valuable profession, even if you never craft a suit of armor. <laughs> All right. Uh, the reason I say that is because bags is where the money is at, let me tell you. So armoring can be crafted in two different places, as you guys can see here. At the outfitting station, if you guys are looking to make bags and or light armor, as well as repair kits and oak flesh bomb, which reduces the amount of physical damage that you receive, and the forge, where the rest of your armor crafting will take place where you're looking to craft plate armor and things of that nature but if you're not making armor you're probably wondering 
All right, so if I'm not making armor, what's the point? Well, the point is bags is a huge source of revenue and not just because of the bags themselves because bags are great. They add a ton of space, especially once you start getting into tier two, tier three, tier four, tier five bags, things will be awesome. You might even hear some people argue that you can get bags from quests, which is true, but not the quality of bags that you're looking for. So remember those perks we were talking about? Guess what? Bags get perks too. And these perks range from being able to carry more stuff all the way to receiving a larger percentage of Azoth when you do receive it, which for my people who are going to be traveling from place to place to place can be very, very valuable. You see, Amazon thought it was a good idea to make a pretty in-depth system that includes a lot of different things and extending the customization options through perks and mods. So if you're paying attention to perks, mods, gem sockets, things of that nature as you're crafting your weapons and armor, things can get pretty crazy pretty fast. I know there's a lot of people out there that are worried about depth, but let me tell you, once you get to level 60, the game changes, but that's not to say that the things before level 60 aren't valuable because they absolutely are. All in all, weapon smithing and armor smithing are pretty valuable throughout the game, even more so valuable once you get to end game and you start getting legendary recipes. But like I said, if you're looking for something to hold you over just for profit wise and or just pure utility, then bags and armor smithing is definitely what you're looking for. So next we're going to be talking about engineering, which is probably one of the most valuable professions in terms of utility. And of course, the monetization there gives you an opportunity to make some coin just because of the things that it offers you. Engineering is where you're going to make your tools, your repair kits, muskets and bows, and most importantly, proficiency boosters. Now, a lot of people don't really know about proficiency boosters, and I don't really see them talked about a lot, but they are one of the most valuable items when it comes to gathering materials because of what they do. But basically, these little boosters increase the percentage of materials that you receive within a certain time frame. And once you get into the higher tier of these proficiency boosters, things can get a little insane. So keeping all of that in mind, engineering is one of the things that if you're looking to make a quick buck, and if you're a quote unquote crafter, then you probably are going to be looking at engineering, if not for guns, musket bows, and all that other stuff, definitely for tools. Now, for those of you guys who don't know where to craft your tools and or guns or bows, you're basically going to be coming to your workshop, uh, which is everywhere in town. It looks like a little desk. It shouldn't be too hard to find. If it is, find it a couple of times, you'll get used to it and adapt. But this is where you're gonna be crafting all your ammo, gunpowder, you know, weapons, all that jazz, but it helps to really know. One thing you want to be aware of, though, too, for those of you, for those of you guys who are just getting into New World, you're going to start off with some really crappy flint tools. And I've seen the mistake of players running around with flint tools until like level 20 because they think that they have to wait that long. But if you wait till level 20, you're literally using the worst tools for two tiers of equipment because at level 5, you can immediately craft iron tools, which can help you out. Once you get to around level 17 or so, depending on how the crafting tools work, uh, steel tools start rolling at about 17, between 17 and 23, uh, depending on the RNG of the crafter. However, getting those uh, upgradable tools in the beginning is a very very important step to your progression and if you're looking at having a significant impact on the way that people manage the resources then engineering is probably going to be for you in terms of profitability and leveling up this ability in terms of leveling this profession up quickly you're looking at ammo tools and weapons not necessarily in that order, but those are some things that could definitely give you a nice little XP pop in the beginning. If you're looking for easy mode, uh, you could just stick to ammo, iron arrows, iron bullets, and uh, you'll get quite a bit of XP until you start rolling into more advanced recipes, which are going to yield you more XP. All right, guys, in my fault, I lied. I know I said we were going to tackle these from left to right, but since we're already on the subject of the engineering and obviously the workshop table, we're going to talk about furnishing. Furnishing, I think, is one of the most slept on professions uh, because a lot of people think that it's just furniture. So they they're like, I don't need a chair. <laughs> right. So they just neglect uh, really looking at furniture or they just wait for somebody else to craft this. Now, the reason why furniture is so, so important, even more so as you continue to get into the game, especially, you know, mid game, late game, end game is because of a few things. First thing that you might not know about is incense. 
Now, incense is one of those things that you literally put in your house. You go in your house, you get a buff. It's nice. It increases the resistance to all afflictions for 10 minutes. Now, obviously, the, the quality of incense goes up. So you can imagine how this happens. But this isn't the best thing, naturally. This is just something else that you guys can think about. Next up is probably one of the most important things, which is storage chests. Now, these storage chests range from great quality all the way to legendary and these chests what they do is once you have a house you can put these chests in your house to expand your overall storage in any, any settlement that you're in now granted you'll need to have a house in specific settlements to put these storage chests in so if you guys haven't seen my which house to buy guide definitely definitely check that out shameless plug but Putting these log storage chests in, in there will effectively increase your storage in a specific town anywhere from 200 to 600, if I remember the values correctly. I can't remember, I'll have to double check that, but it's somewhere around there. It's either 2 to 500 per chest or 2 to 600, maybe, maybe more. I can't remember, maybe less. But it's, it's pretty significant, so if you guys are looking to expand your storage because you guys are massive farmers, especially in a, any given specific area, storage chests are for you. Now, the last thing I want to talk about with furnishing, another thing that people kind of neglect because a lot of people aren't really, you know, don't have a house in the beginning. So they're just like, yeah, whatever. But trophies are one of the biggest, most slept on things in the game. Because um, what these trophies do is when you place them in your house, they give you bonuses. Things like bonuses for using crafting stations, bonuses for gathering. And bonuses when killing specific mobs or monsters. And you could bet your ass that minor trophies aren't where the buck stops. So there's higher quality trophies that you can get resulting in better bonuses. And once you have a home, you can put up to five of these bad boys in your house. Now for those of you guys who are wondering where to craft these beasts or make your perfect furniture house or Ikea or Ashley Furniture Store, you guys can find this at the workshop alongside of the tools and all that other stuff if you guys happen to be going engineering. Now, next up, guys, we're going to be talking about jewel crafting. Jewel crafting, definitely one of the hardest professions to level, for sure, but definitely one of the most valuable and viable professions throughout the entire game. Let me explain to you why. It's not easy getting jewelry in the world outside of quests and or getting lucky on specific drops from name mobs in the world. Not to mention that those, those name mobs, for the most part from my experience, drop very specific items. So if you're looking for a specific stat, you have to know exactly which mob to farm and then hope that after you kill this mob repeatedly that they drop what you need. Now, the way to get around that though is to utilize a jewel crafter in your guild and or become one. Now, in order to do that, you're going to need two things. One of those things is going to be the stone cutting table. So you're going to need to get a lot of stone and mine a lot of ores so you guys can get gems and or do fishing. Of course, you can get gems from the chest that you can get from fishing. And then you're going to need to cut these gems, which you can do so by using the stone cutting table. After you've done that, you're going to find yourself at the outfitting station. I know it can be confusing sometimes trying to figure out what station is used to craft what, but the outfitting station is the one that you're looking for. It's normally near the loom in most towns. Now, this is what makes jewelry crafting so complex and one of the hardest professions is the fact that you need to make accessories that go with the piece of jewelry that you're crafting. So if you're making a necklace, you need settings and chains. If you're making rings, you also need settings, but then you need a ring band. And then if you're making earrings, you need settings and hooks. But one of the benefits of jewelry is that they're so hard to come by otherwise that this almost forces this profession to be profitable from the start all the way to the end. Now, the same thing is going to apply with the weapon smithing and armor smithing here. You're going to be wanting to pay attention to the perks that you can add to your jewelry. So whether that's just extra stats, whether that's a perk, whatever the case may be, making your best jewelry can be very profitable for you and for others. Now, another thing that can be useful for you in PvP and in other situations is gemstone dust, which increases absorption of elemental damage types by 300% for a short window of time. And a last pop stop, when you're like, oh my God, I need to use something so I can stay alive, these can also be useful. All in all, jewel crafting is a awesome profession, albeit very difficult to manage and or progress with. But if you put in the time, 
it can be very valuable as to this is where you're going to be getting a lot of your stats and perks, especially in game. So now let's talk Arcana. Arcana, I think overall, it's useful to everyone. Uh, even if you're not going to be leveling Arcana, I think this is definitely something that you could look at, especially in the beginning of the game, because for those of you guys who are running around the little blue bushes, high sop, I think is what it's called, you guys can gather those and craft weak potions. All you need is water plus herb early on. It doesn't require any proficiency, and you can craft as many potions as you see fit. It doesn't give a lot of XP per se, but it's still useful nonetheless, especially when you're trying to stay alive. Arcana is also useful for crafting mage weapons. So Ice Gauntlet Fire Staff users, you'll spend a lot of time here. It's also really nice for the coatings if you are if you know you're gonna be farming in a specific area to get the extra damage against the type that you're fighting. You can also get specific elemental absorption potions here that only last for a short amount of time, but can be very effective in key situations. But the real value, I think personally of Arcana is access to quintessence or being able to craft quintessence when you need it. Unfortunately, you're gonna need a lot of this stuff for crafting entry keys to dungeons, a lot of different recipes in game. So it definitely cannot hurt to have this available or have someone in your guild that has Arcana maxed out. For those of you guys looking to craft anything with Arcane, you guys are looking to go to the Arcane repository. Unfortunately, the smaller potions, like the weaker potions, aren't that great for XP early on. But once you get into the higher quality potions, they can be really, really good XP, both for your character and of course for your profession. And then as you're crafting weapons and things of that nature, you'll find big boosts as well. All in all, I think that everyone should have a little bit of Arcana in their life, just so they have easier access to potions until you're able to find areas where you can farm better potions effectively and efficiently. But until then, grabbing the high sop early in the game and grabbing a little water from a well or a lake close to any of the starter zones can help you stay alive a lot longer, which means more XP, more resources, and you potentially beating the competition if you're racing to level. Now, last but not least for you Gordon Ramsay's out there, Bobby Flays, diners, drives in, drive-ins and dash. <laughs> uh, cooking is the last profession that we're gonna talk about. Uh, cooking actually is a profession that I definitely underestimated when I first started playing this game back in August 2020 um, for the preview. Um, I also underestimated it throughout Alpha, and then it wasn't until I started looking at the recipes for cooking that I realized that I was an idiot. Now the beautiful thing about cooking outside of light rations which I'd imagine most people will stay, is that it offers a crap ton of bonuses, some of which can stack depending on what you're doing. So if you're managing your cooking buffs effectively, it can make you significantly stronger, especially as you start getting the rare recipes that you can only find in the world. Now this is also a place where you can find dyes for those of you guys looking to color and customize your armor. Now, the thing with cooking is this. Naturally, you need to find a kitchen in order to craft these recipes. But what makes cooking really difficult, and the reason why a lot of people don't do it, is because it requires a lot of legwork. To give you an example, you need to collect nuts that you guys can find throughout the world on the floor if you're paying attention. You can find some in First Light near the river to the north at Campbell's Rest, by the way, pro tip. And you can also leverage using oil that your friends who are fishing, because you definitely will have friends who are fishing, to create cooking oil. Things get more complicated when we start having to look at seasoning blends, which by the way, honey you can get from honey trees throughout the world. They look like they have a little honeycomb sticking out of the side. It took me a long time, wasn't even aware that honey trees even existed until open beta. And things like basil and paprika, you can get just from gathering and harvesting herb nodes throughout the world. Uh, some people are, uh, have told me that certain seasonings only uh, uh, spawn in certain locations of the world, but I've yet to confirm that yet. Give me a little bit of time But I do know that you can get seasoning from like let's say harvesting Herbs or high sop like when you guys are getting the high sop to make your potions you can get seasoning there So cooking is kind of one of those things that as you're gathering you're not really thinking of these are the specific items that I'm looking for you're thinking more like I'm just gonna gather all this stuff and then with the result of all the items that I found I'm gonna cook what I can type deal until you get to the point that there are specific recipes I could tell you firsthand that we really valued our chefs um, when we were sieging because the extra food buffs 
make a huge difference in combat. Not necessarily the initial ones that you have available when you guys first start cooking, but when you start finding those crazy recipes in the world, those high level cooking recipes that increase your focus by like 30 and 40, yes, it can happen, then you'll really start to see that having the food available for your soldiers, your troops to eat before a siege or before an invasion or before or during a tough dungeon can really help and make the difference between success and defeat. Now, I'm not saying that you absolutely need these recipes to shine, but it definitely can make a difference, a noticeable difference, if your whole squad is running with food buffs and you're up against a squad that's not. Although tedious, I think that cooking is a lot of fun, but it can be hard to see the value overall until you realize what you've been missing. Now, I can't say personally how much value cooking will have throughout like early game when people don't really care if they're eating food or not eating food and they're just, you know, potion spamming. But I can tell you that later on, uh, from personal experience, that cooking will become very, very important to the success of your community. Now, all in all, I will say that all of the professions are really, really important. There are some professions that will definitely take more precedence over others, specifically like armor smithing for the bags early on, engineering for the tools, and arcana for the potions. But as you progress, other things will start to become more important. Weapon smithing for specific items, jewel crafting basically throughout because you need jewelry, furnishing because you guys will be buying your houses, and cooking, of course, because then you guys will start to realize the value of having the extra stat. But regardless of where you find yourself, the biggest thing is to try to figure out what profession is going to benefit your team most. Coming from a standpoint that, all right, what does our guild have? What does my team have? What do we need? And how can we complement each other? You might have a fisherman who's collecting oil that has nothing to do with the oil other than turn it into the town board, in which case you can grab and convert and increase your cooking. Does that make sense? Or one of your chefs might be gathering spices to make dishes but has nothing to do with all the other herbs that he's collecting like the high sap and all that other stuff which you can in turn use to make potions and level up your arcana. A jewel crafter might be hitting all the iron nodes on the planet to get gems and has nothing to do with the iron so in turn that iron could be delivered to your weaponsmith or armorsmith to make some better armor for your guild. Regardless though, there is some way that you can benefit somebody else with any of these professions and working together and bringing these professions together is what's going to make all of the difference in your playthrough. If you guys are wondering what profession I'm going to go, I'm most likely going to go weaponsmithing and, and furnishing just because I've had this insane obsession with designing my own house. Uh, <laughs> but that's a topic of conversation for another day but anyway guys uh that's all i wanted to cover today um hopefully you guys were able to glean some information i wanted to share you know my opinion my experience with dealing with all of these professions with you guys and kind of give you some ideas of when a lot of these things are profitable not profitable and what about the professions make them so good if you guys got any questions comments concerns definitely let me know in the comment box below and i'll be happy to assist and we will see you guys in the next video peace